It's your bro, Rex, 2008. Alright, so hello, people. Bike Life TV here. We're here with Mark Bardry, one of the sponsor riders going out on the Gibraltar Race 2018. And he's going to tell us a bit about his journey so far and what to expect to on the race this year. So, Mark, introduce yourself. Tell us how long you've been riding and what got you into the Gibraltar Race. Well, we've been riding, I've been riding bikes since I was 17. Okay. Um, and I've done various disciplines with motocross, enduro racing. Um, and road racing, and and then after that, I've gone into the to the off road um, riding again, um, and then I saw the advertising of the Gibraltar race last year, and uh, in a magazine, and I thought that looks like a challenge. Yeah. So uh, yeah, put my name about and got some sponsors, Bike Life TV. Yeah, um, gave us a hand. So um, yeah, did the Gibraltar race last year on a Triumph, as you well know, and um, and it was a, it was a great great sort of 14 day challenge. Um, this year I've been lucky enough to be sponsored um, and this year I'm also riding for the for a charity okay. um, which is EACH, East Anglia uh, Children's Hospice. Cool. Um, and the sponsors this year are Albany Interiors, the company I work for. Um, we go out um, on the 22nd, we start racing on the 22nd and uh, we're riding from Romania um, and then we're traveling all the way through Hungary, Slovenia, Italy, France, um, Portugal, Spain, okay. and down to Gibraltar over the 14 days. So, yeah, another off-road navigational challenge. Um, and uh, but yeah, yeah, looking looking forward to it. So you're riding through about eight different countries. Basically. Yeah, yeah, seven to eight different um, countries, and we're in the saddle from any any time from 10 hours to 12 hours a day. Um, navigating um, to certain waypoints that they give you on your GPS that you've got to try and do and uh, get there in a certain time so points are won and lost on your navigation okay um, so that's where that's where the, when it all happens is when you get to what they call a special special section which is is your off-road section which they'll give you a distance to navigate in certain areas to, to navigate to in a certain time okay so that's where all the point scoring is is done so, and where did you come last year? Uh, last year I finished seventeenth uh, overall, 17th. Um, and seventh in class. So this year I'm 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 hoping to push a little bit better. I'm on a much lighter bike than I was last year. Yeah. Uh, last year I was riding sort of quarter of a ton of, of a ton, bike. Which is quite heavy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The heavy, heavy when you got to pick it up. Um, but this year I'm on a um, an SWM uh, 650, which is a much lighter bike, sort of 155 kilograms. So the off-road sections will be a lot easier yeah. on me and certainly a lot lighter to pick it up when I drop it, cool. um, which is inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> inevitable. So tell the people what's the terrains like that you cross? Um, this is your second year. Second year, so yeah, second year. year. So year. last year was an eye opener on some of it on a big bike. It was, um, there was some challenging uh, terrain sort of thing, rocks, um, loose gravel. Um, some hill climbs and then you've got some um, muddy forest sections so it's a varied off-road um, terrain so you can you can be faced with anything because you don't know what's coming yeah. you've just got to ride it and, 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 and do your best um, so uh, yeah the, the, the terrain in sort of uh, last year certainly Bulgaria Albania and Macedonia they were they were sort of quite hard hard grueling um, uh, sort of off-road sections and and one would imagine Romania is going to yeah. be pretty much the same and, and so is Hungary um, and so is Slovenia so yeah. but once you get into sort of France and um, Italy and, and Spain the, the, the land opens up a little bit more it's a lot faster yeah um, much larger sort of um, sand tracks and, and loose gravel tracks so it, it okay. becomes a lot faster racing sort of thing yeah, I saw some clips on your last journey was like quite hilly kind of yeah yeah parts. there was some there was some tricky stuff there with them um, the, with the rocks um, certainly on a big bike, the lighter bike this year, I'm, 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 I'm happy sort of thing because it's, it's, a, it's a lightweight enduro bike and yeah. it will do me proud sort of thing. I've been training on it and um, I did a, um, a rally a couple of weeks ago um, which on, on one day covered sort of 425 kilometres or 465 kilometres so got me used to that kind of type of distance yeah. which is what we'll be covering each day Okay. Um, around about that, that sort of um, Distance, anything from sort of 200. I would say, I would say we won't be much shorter than than a 300 kilometer a day sort of thing. It'll be it'll be up between 300 and 500 kilometers a day. So, um, 
and obviously a, a certain section of that is navigating, so you've got to navigate and ride yeah. fast at the same time. Cool. So for the people that don't um, know the conversion between kilometres and miles, how, how many Yeah, miles uh, I would say mileage-wise you're looking at probably um, plus 250 miles um, to miles. 300 miles a day, yeah, yeah, to, to, to cover, you know yeah. I mean, yeah, we've got to get through seven, seven countries in, in 14 days real, sort of real. thing, um, yeah, obviously sometimes the mileage gets a little bit higher because you get lost yeah. on your GPS, which uh, I, I, did, I did last year, I got lost in Italy um, a couple of times, but yeah, made it through. Sure. <laughs> so what's the guys like that you meet on your journey? Yeah, you mean there's, um, the, the, the guys, um, that, that are, we're all riding with, they, they've all got the same common goal. It's it's an adventure. Yeah. Um, again, it's it's very it, it's um it's the mini Dakar for us yeah. sort of thing. It's um it's something that's achievable for us. Um, and for, for for most people, you save up hard enough and you can you can do it sort of thing. But the guys you meet, they're all of the same ilk. They they just want to go out there, right. ride some off run yeah. off road sections, and and just have some fun sort of thing. And uh, there's not lots of partying going on because yeah. um, when you get back to the what, what they call a bivouac, which is where you stay every night, um, is uh, everybody's pretty exhausted and you've got to self-maintain your bike. Yeah. So once you get back, you've got to sure. check everything's good and ready for the next day. And then I pitch my tent and I try and get some sleep cool. sort of thing. But so there's not too much partying going on. Um, <laughs> until the end of the until the end, of the, the, end trip. of the race, yeah, 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 for sure. So, what extras have you got on your bike, or have you had to adapt your bike for you to make? Okay, so w w when I got the bike, um, we the, picked up the bike brand new, um, and then you start. First thing is to do is to try and get the bike as light as possible, um, taking um, bits that you don't need, rear foot pegs off. Yeah. Um, lightening the bike up as much as possible then you've got to start looking at the protection of the bike um, the race 14 days through some of the off-road sections you're going to drop it um, there's rocks there's boulders you've yeah. got you've got to you've got to make sure that you can protect that bike as much as possible so we put a um, uh, a belly pan on which is sort of like an, an aluminium protection yeah. to, to protect the under part of the the, the, the bike um, we change things like grips we put on a navigation um, mount which you can put your GPS onto. Yeah. Um, hand guards to protect your hands if you if you crash or anything or going through woods. Um, what else? Um, change chain the sprockets to a heavier duty chain the sprockets and then we change tires. Um, and then um, yeah, just making sure that everything's um, is, is spot on, ready for the race. I mean, you've checked it, you've you've serviced it, you've made sure everything. Is, is on the money because what you don't yeah. want to be doing is going over them breaking down yeah, on the first day. Start, yeah. It's devastating yeah, sort of thing. So um, yeah, making the bike light. Um, you've also got to prepare yourself um, and the, the, the equipment that you're going to take with you. If you're out on an off-road section and you crash, you've got to be able to repair a lever. Yeah. So you've got to take spare levers, spare, spare bits and pieces to repair your bike. Um, because once you're out there, that, that's it. That you've got to sort of self-repair. Yeah, there is yeah. recovery, but it's better to repair yourself yeah, and, and keep racing, sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. To get to you, mate, for, for sure. Well, yeah. Well. yeah. So since your journey last year, obviously you've got a new bike this year. Yeah. What other sponsors do you have uh, backing you for this? Um, this year, this year I mean, because we, we've got the sort of the, the big sponsor with Albany Interiors and everything. So we've we've gone for the the charity direction, um, okay. and we're raising money for 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 each. So. Um, people on board. We've um, been lucky enough today to secure um, a, a great donation from HOK, um, which are, are a company of global architects okay. in London. Um, Wessex Fixings is a company that we use um, for our supplies, who have uh, been very generous. Um, and there's um, various companies that we use that we've asked, okay. um, and they've all been very, very helpful and donated. And, and we've generated uh, um, some good, good. Um, funds from Facebook and things yeah. like that so the advertising on Facebook I've just keep I keep handing people yeah. put your put your hand in your pocket every penny counts sort of penny thing counts and yeah. the support is always needed for sure for sure yeah. so Mark what kind of training do you do to make sure you're ready for the race okay um, well this year um, I've um, I've probably worked a little harder than I did last year um, because I know what I'm going into this year, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've worked sort of hard to sort of lose some weight. Um, so I've, um, in fact, lost 
Lost uh, nearly a stone in oh, weight, okay, that's so good. that's good. So all my riding kit fits a lot better. <laughs> um, but the, the most important thing about a, a rally of this kind is um, is more endurance. Yeah. Um, is and and mind conditioning is is knowing that you've got to um, once you're on the bike, you know you've got 12 hours ahead of you um, riding you and navigate yeah. and and you stop for fuel and stuff like that. But there's times when you want to stop and go. You know, I'm done. I'm, 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 I'm seven hours in, and you, I've, I've got another five hours to go. Yeah, and, and heat you've must got to keep. Oh uh, yeah, so. you've and and the heat you're going through, 35 degrees, um, and you've got to push through. So, and it gives you an idea of, of what the, the people like the, the, those professional Dakar riders go through yeah. um, in that heat and and the, the, the sort of riding through that. So, although it's physical preparation, there there is a certain amount of of, of sort of psyching yourself up yeah. this is it I'm gonna do this and and, and riding on the bike I, I, I've been out as much as I can at weekends riding off-road trying to do six seven eight hours a day okay, uh, just just practicing just knowing that you're, yeah you're getting tired and my mates hate it because I drag them out and they yeah, go yeah, I've had enough now yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, what? no we've got another two hours to go now sort of thing yeah and they go yeah all right. so um but okay. yeah that's the type of preparation is it is it's a lot of mental preparation, yeah. knowing that you've got that challenge ahead of you, and that's that's the challenge of of, 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 a, of an event like this. It's you're challenging yourself as as well as your, your navigational skills and, and your fitness and everything else. So, yeah, okay, cool. I'd like to think I'm ready for it. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. <laughs> I believe so. The new bike, lighter bike. That's, that's yeah, you can maybe definitely number one, lighter, so. lighter racer, lighter bike. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Does, did anything happen on your journey of 2017? Like, what was the worst thing that could happen during the whole? The, 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 days? Yeah, the worst thing was day one. Day one. Day one. On day one. Uh, day one. I um, hungry, excited. Yeah. Um, took the brain out, left it in the lunch box, oh, okay. and uh, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I went out, and on the first special section, I was riding. Um, I was comfortable with the speed I was going, and then I. I crashed quite oh, quite badly, and I cracked two ribs, and I, I did my hip in sort of thing, and it, it it took a long time to get through that special section, yeah. and that whole day was a, a painful journey, and that was the that was the first day of a 14-day event, and when I got back to the bivouac, they the nurse peeled me off the bike, <laughs> and and I got seen by the race doctor and confirmed my sort of cracked ribs, and. Um, and that was my lowest point. I remember okay. phoning up my girlfriend and going, what have I done? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? I've invested all this yeah. money and effort and, and, um, and I didn't think I'd be able to ride the next day because I was in so much pain, but they, they were kind enough to give me a hotel bed um, and a considerable amount of drugs, which, yeah, was, which, was, which was great. Um, and, <laughs> a sort of morphine or yeah, something. Yeah, that's it, yeah, it was great. Um, the Italians, uh, they, they, have a, they have a certain different type of uh, um, ibuprofen over there, okay, <laughs> it's okay. slightly stronger. Um, but I got up the next day and, and, and in good spirits and I thought this is it, I'm going to do it. And, and, um, and that's that mindset. Yeah, the mindset. The, the mindset is actually don't give up on this, this is going to be a painful second day, but you can do it. Yeah. If you just take it a bit slowly, and, and I did, and, and the second day was, and the third day got easier, and yeah, and the drugs wore off, and, and, and they got paid. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, yeah. it. But okay, yeah, no. Nice. So, it, but, the but the excitement of that day one, at the beginning, and then that first part of the day, and then crashing. I, I've crashed many, many times, um, and got away with it. Yeah. Um, this particular time, it just, it just went wrong, and. And I, like, I hurt myself. I was badly winded, sort of thing. Somebody, a couple of the riders stopped and helped me pick the bike up. But they're on a race. They, yeah, they, they, they helped me up, and they were gone, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a low point at the beginning of the race. Yeah. And the rest of it just went up from there. Yeah, it's yeah. You, you, you just every day was a challenge, and you completed it. Um, so yeah, it was. It was so yeah. when you completed the race, was the ribs still hurting? Or was yeah, it, it was. They, they were. St they were. They were. They were. They were getting better, but they. You well, know, yeah. yeah, you were bouncing around for fourteen yeah, that's days. Yeah, about to say <laughs> the terrain and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I came home nice. and it was. Um, yeah, uh, la la laughing was yeah. laughing was sore, um, but yeah, no, it was. Um, I think to, as you got further into the race, the pain didn't seem to matter as much More because your goal became yeah. closer and closer, and and and. Uh, uh, 
when you're talking in the bivouac to the other guys and the radius, it's like, yeah, Gibraltar's close. We're gonna we're gonna make it now, it's, and, and so your your determination goes slightly higher, and that takes the pain away, I guess. But um, yeah, so it's um, I'm not gonna do that this year. Yeah, yeah, course no, course not course pressing that. No oh. pressing big time this year. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So for any young people that would like to get involved in the um, Gibraltar race or yeah um, well it's I mean um, the, 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 for them to yeah getting getting into off-road rallying is um, it's getting bigger and bigger um, certainly in the UK um, it's, it's it's quite big in Europe because they've got the area to, to do it but um, there's a, a um, company at the moment called Rally Moto um, and they set up um, a, a British sort of rally scene okay. um, and they do sort of weekend events um, sort of around sort of four different parts of the country, a couple in Wales and it's a two day event where you get to ride off road, um, a marked out track. Okay. Um, the navigation over here isn't, they, they don't do the traditional navigation so much over here, it's, um, it's more in Europe where you get that type of rallying but okay. um, get yourself a, a, a road legal um, bike, can be a 125 uh, up to anything you want to ride sort of yeah. thing, get used to riding off road and, um, and, and then start looking at the websites and th there's plenty out there that's sort of starting and then there's loads of um, training schools um, in, in, in Wales and all around the country really that, that will develop your skills off road okay. and, and teach you navigation and stuff. So. Um, yeah, there's plenty so, out there. Get looking online if you're into off-roading. If you start looking online, you can find uh, places that help you train, as Mark said, and you'll find the courses so you can prepare yourself ready if it's three months and down the line. Or as for next year, get yourself ready. If you want to do anything with the Gibraltar race, get in touch with me on my website, and I'll be happy to help and point you in the right direction for sure. Cool. Um, keep them your website details. Oh yeah, the website www.racingbearadventures.com. <laughs>